Would you like to become a fascinating personality, break free from plateaus and gain power over your mental resources and your full potential? You came to the right place. Welcome to a magical journey to yourself. This show is made in Germany. If you like the show, please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or PureMindMagic.club. Welcome to Season 1, Shaping Your Reality. And here is your host, international magician, speaker, and book author, Victoria Mavis. Thanks for tuning in to Pure Mind Magic and December 20. Today I have Paul Moore on the show and I have to say that this was one of my favorite interviews this year so far. Paul is just amazing. He went from being two millions in death to debt free completely And we are talking about the difference between the poverty mentality and also a healthy wealth mindset. Paul does a lot in real estate, but also in investment in general. He's the author of two books. One of them is called Perfect Investment. And also Paul is the co-host of the podcast How to Lose Money. He will tell us a little bit about that as well. And I had the honor already to be a guest on his show. So before we start the interview, Christmas is now really close. And this is why I'm suggesting something really last minute to you, because maybe you have in mind that you could get something really personal for someone from your family or your partner, like a creation with pictures, with their name, something like that. And there is a great service, a platform in UK where you can hire freelancers from worldwide. Most of them are in London and the UK area, but obviously they all work a remote. And there are some really high talents in graphic design and similar things also like creating special short movies, music, uh, writing a song for you. So there's a lot of creativity captured there. And with my affiliate link in the show notes, you get 30 pounds off your first order. So I'm sure you can manage and make it happen that whatever you order there will arrive until December 24th. We are almost there. So this is the gift tip for today. And now prepare to get some hot investment tips from the expert himself. Here is for you on the show, Paul Moore. Hi, Paul. How are you doing today? Great, Victoria. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so happy that you took the invitation and that we can create today an inspirational episode all around the theme of wealth. Yeah, me too. It's exciting to talk about that. It's something I've struggled with for most of my life. And and so I'm looking forward to chatting about it. I actually um, made a lot of money over the years, lost a lot of money over the years. And sometimes when I was making it, I wasn't even happy about it. So that was kind of crazy. But hopefully I've figured out a better mindset for that now. <laughs> that is really crazy. So Paul, before we go into all the details about it. Can you give us a brief description of who you are and what you are doing? Okay. Well, I am, again, Paul Moore, and I'm the founding managing member of Wellings Capital. And we are a multifamily and self-storage syndication firm. We pool together a lot of people's money to buy uh, large assets. Uh, for example, we Uh, joined with some friends to raise about seven and a half million dollars recently to purchase a twenty-three million dollar self storage self storage facility in Florida, and uh, we're hoping that that will return a very nice return for our investors. I do that, uh, like you mentioned. I also have a book called The Perfect Investment, 
It's a real estate investing book. I have a podcast called How to Lose Money, which is a wealth-building podcast, but we talk to people about their mistakes and failures. And I'm also really passionate about thwarting human trafficking and rescuing its victims. And my goal is to raise a billion dollars to stop that worldwide epidemic in uh, future years. So we can talk about that more later if you like. Wow, yeah, that are really amazing topics. And it's so interesting where you are involved and what you are doing also with the money you earn and the money you invest. So yeah, a lot of interesting things coming up. And before we started the interview, Paul, you mentioned something really interesting that you had around two millions in the bank and then lost everything or almost everything. And you broke free from that in 13 months. Can you give us some clues around that story? Absolutely. Well, one of the things I like to talk about a lot, Victoria, is I... I'm in my 50s, and I actually am sick and tired of swinging for the fences. I used to confuse investing and gambling. I told people at once I sold my company in 1997, I put about two point, uh, we, we had about $2.9 million. I put about $1.9 million of that in the bank. And I like to tell people that I was an investor at this time. And uh, <laughs> actually, I wasn't investing at all. I was actually gambling. And I thought I was investing. You know, investing is when your principal is safe and you have a chance to make a return on investment. But gambling is when your principal is not at all safe and you have a chance to make a return on that so-called investment. And I was gambling a lot with the money that I had. And so I made a lot of good investments. I made a lot of money in the, the next 10 years after I put that money in the bank in 97. But I lost a lot of money as well. And I tied a lot up in real estate. And when the market turned, you know, we had the great recession that started around 2007 or eight. And I found myself uh, not with 1.9 million in the bank, but I found myself two and a half million dollars in debt. And all my income was coming from real estate. All my investments were in real estate and everything was going down the tubes. And I didn't even know how badly things were going down the tubes and it was the fall of 2007 and I my business partner just informed me that he was going to quit which means he was going to sign over the ownership and all the debts of the real estate that we had left in the company over to me which means my debt was going up and my payments were going up and my outlook for the future was going down and so One morning, I, and one of the mindset things I look forward to talking about later is the importance of meditation and the importance of having the right mindset. And so I was oddly not as upset about this as I probably should have been, Victoria. And I was sitting in my chair one Sunday morning and I was doing a little meditation. And for some reason, the name George Mueller came to my mind. Now, you're German, so you know the right pronunciation. That's George Mueller, I believe. But everybody in the West, most of the people in America call him George Mueller. Now, George Mueller was actually a hellion from Germany, and he became radically changed, and he became a pastor in England, and he lived through most of the 19th century. George Mueller moved to Bristol, England, and George uh, decided that he was going to show the world how a great mindset and how great faith could actually change the internal, in other words, how the internal world could impact the external world. But he was going to do that using an external uh, 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 manifestation of his faith and his mindset. So what George Mueller did is he said, I'm going to adopt a whole bunch of orphans. And so he started opening orphanages. And uh, in, over the course of many, many decades, Victoria, he actually brought in, housed and fed and raised 10,000 orphans. And he did this, he did this with no money raising machine at all, no means of support, no way that anyone knew of, of making money. He basically did it based on his mindset, his faith, and he actually 
was able to be very successful. And I think he raised $180 million in U.S. dollars in today's dollars in the course of his lifetime. And so back to my story. So I was thinking and meditating that morning about George Mueller. I thought, what would George Mueller do if, he is, if his back was against the wall and he was this deeply in debt? Well, number one, George Mueller would never be in debt at all. So that was out. But if he would have been in debt, I thought to myself, what would he have done? Well, he would have begun giving generously. I mean, really generously. So I thought, well, that's what we're going to do. So I called two of my friends together who were encouraging me to uh, file bankruptcy. And I called my family together separately. And I said, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give our way out of debt. And if it doesn't work, which it might not work, I guess we'll be in the same boat we are now, which is facing bankruptcy. And so January 1st, 2008, we started pretending. We started with the mindset that we were making a half a million dollars a year, which we weren't at all, trust me. And we said, we're going to act like we're making half a million dollars a year. We're going to be generous like we're we're, we're making half a million a year. We're going to have that mindset. And we began to give generously to various charities, foundations, church, et cetera, the things we were passionate about. And guess what? About four weeks later, I was in a restaurant and I met a real estate developer and I told him briefly about the situation I was in. He said, huh, you ought to try this. And he gave me this little idea and I said, oh, yeah, I already thought of that. And yeah, that wouldn't work. And here's why it wouldn't work. And he said, oh, well, you know, you could – You can see it that way, but there may be another way to look at it. Just think about it. And all of a sudden, it was like this massive light bulb dawned on me, Victoria, and I realized, wait a minute, I can use that law that says I can't subdivide this property and actually use it in a different way to potentially subdivide the property. And long story short, I ended up before the Planning and Zoning Commission, which was the people who decided whether you can, what you can do with your property. And they were shocked that I used their law and I turned it around and said, well, what if you looked at it a different way? And they approved my request. I subdivided the property, made a subdivision out of it. And 13 months later, I was completely debt free. And this happened right in the middle of the hurtling downward uh, great recession that we saw in 2008. So that's my story. Wow, that's really inspiring, Paul, what you've been through there. And I guess you learned a lot. And it's so interesting that you as a investor and dealing with all this real estate mentioned also how important meditation and mindset actually is. So I'm going to ask you on that a little later as well. But let's go back to mindset. You mentioned also before I started recording the poverty mentality and that a lot of people are struggling with it in the US today. And it seems like that you also had times in your life where you had to struggle with that. So what is your best advice on how to deal with poverty mentality and what is the best and fast, a fast way to get out of it? Well, that's a great question. And, you know, a lot of people in the West have been, um, you know, deeply impacted by people like Martin Luther and Francis of Assisi and Mother Teresa, these great people, uh, many people of faith who did all these great exploits, but they had a poverty mindset. And it seems like they had a gift of poverty, just an ability to live very frugally. Um, And I'm thinking of the Wesley brothers, the founders of the Methodist religion, and they lived very, very frugally. George Miller did. And um, so a lot of people in the West, a lot of people in America at least, they really think that that's the ideal, that really, you know, uh, we, wealth, is, wealth is a bad thing and it's a harmful thing. And then, you know, there's other people like the, the founders of socialism and they taught, you know, that the people, the wealthy people were the problem. And so you've got, you know, religion and socialism and all these things teaching us this. And so we've got, you know, the most prosperous society in world history in the West right now, and and I'm thinking particularly where I live in America, yet we've got this kind of deep down guilt about it. We feel like, well, if we, 
if we were really good people, we wouldn't be that way. We wouldn't have wealth. We wouldn't have this car and this house and this mortgage and these payments. And so we live in this kind of tension where we think we're bad people and we think we really shouldn't have all that we have and we really shouldn't enjoy these vacations or whatever we have. But the truth is we do it anyway because it's really hard not to. And so that's kind of a simplistic answer, isn't it? But anyway, so we 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 do it anyway and we live in this kind of a guilt, kind of this mindset that, well, we're really bad people and if we were good people, we would be different. And the problem with that is it – you know, whatever you set your mind on, whatever you make as your goal and your mindset, that is what you'll pursue. But if you actually feel really guilty about it deep down, well, you're going to, there's a chance that you could sabotage your own success. And we could talk about that for hours. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think that that poverty mindset has really caused a great problem. And I think it's something that people should think really hard about. Do you really want a poverty mindset? I mean, great literature of history always points to poverty being a curse and a bad thing. And look at all the children. I mean, I'm asking you, Victoria, look at all the children starving in the world right now. Look at all the horrible diseases. There, most of those things could be fixed by wealth, yet we live in this prosperous Western society feeling guilty about it. If we made more money, if we pursued wealth, but if we did it for the benefit of others, which is how I believe we are created to do, then we could have a lot more impact. You know, people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett don't think this way. Bill Gates, obviously, we all know he is spending the rest of his life. He's not very old. He's spending the rest of his life giving away his and Warren Buffett's, you know, hundred billion dollars or so. Uh, to fix big problems in the world. I don't think they have a poverty mindset, and I think we should rethink ours. Yes, that's a really good point there. And I think it's also like when you are wealthy, you can help more people. So it's not so much about feeling guilt. It's really getting money to get money out into the world and make a difference there and impact and help people. So, Paul, you're the author of Perfect Investment, what tells me that you really have an idea on how investment works. So I have two questions for you around that. So first, what would you say are the best tips from you as an expert to invest money? And second, what would be your best tips to invest in yourself? Well, that's a great question. And so I, you know, I was amazed when I was about 50 years old. I had, like I told you before, I had swung for the fences most of my life. I had invested in all these high risk, supposedly high return ventures. And sometimes I made a lot of money, but sometimes I lost a lot. A perfect example is an oil well. Now, I have a petroleum engineering degree, and so I thought I knew something about investing in oil and gas wells, and so I threw a lot of money and a lot of my friend's money down a hole in the ground in North Dakota, and nothing came out. So we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars on an oil and gas investment, and that's a perfect example of high risk, high return. We thought, well, we'll risk some, we'll have a risk here, but the return will be hundredfold. So it would be a massive return on investment. It actually, the return was zero. And that points out uh, one of my investing tips, which is this. Risk and return are not proportionate. It's really more like this. Take a low risk, get a low return. Take a high risk and get a high potential return. But there's also a high potential loss. So while low risk usually does have a low return, high risk often has low return and no return. In fact, you lose your principal. And so my investing tip would be to find an investment class, find an asset class where your principal is very safe. And for me, that's been commercial real estate. You know, about, uh, I think it's 80 some percent of the wealthiest, the Forbes 400, the list of the wealthiest uh, folks uh, that's put out by Forbes magazine every year in the U.S., 
um, that uh, I think 80% or so either got their money, acquired it, or they uh, maintain it in part through commercial real estate. The problem is that commercial real estate is really hard for most of us to get into. There's a lot of barriers to entry. For example, you'd have to have millions of dollars in liquidity, millions and millions of dollars of net worth. You need to have a track record. You need to show the real estate broker and the seller and others that you and the lender that you can do this. So there's lots of these high barriers to entry. So what we found is that syndicating is an answer to that. And that would be having an expert, uh, a real estate investment expert, pull together these deals and then have a lot of individuals invest, let's say, 50 or 100,000 in U.S. dollars in these deals, put that money together. We have 40 or 50 people go in as co-owners then, and we buy one of these larger assets. And so I've found that the risk-return uh, ratio, which is actually um, measured by something called the SHARP ratio, that's S-H-A-R-P-E, it's the return divided by the risk, uh, that it's actually amazingly um, positive for commercial real estate and specifically for multifamily, which is apartment investing and self-storage. So that's what I do. That's what I'm excited about. As far as investing in yourself, I talked to a guy today who was the co-author of a book called The Miracle Morning for Entrepreneurs. He also uh, was the, invest, uh, the author of a very popular uh, worldwide bestseller called Double Double and another one called Meetings Suck. <laughs> and his name's Cameron Harold. And Cameron said that his, his biggest advice on my uh, podcast this morning actually was you need to invest in yourself. And he said he likes to believe – he believes – that if you're not investing in your people, then you're not really investing completely in growing your company and you're going to hurt it. And he said he likes to budget 5% of the gross revenue of a company to invest in growing its people. So he said he personally spends about $100,000 a year in four or five different masterminds that he goes to and he sits among people and he said, my goal is to not be the smartest person in the room. Now, he's a real smart guy, but he's surrounding himself by a lot of people who he says are smarter or more experienced in the areas that he wants to grow and learn in. And so, like I said, he's spending something like $100,000 a year in doing this. So I think that's my investment, uh, my invest in yourself tip, Victoria, and that is you know, be willing to spend the money to grow personally and put yourself in a room with real smart people on a regular basis. Very good advice, Paul. And I really agree here with you because I also think that you can always lose money and lose things you invested in. So it just happens because it is this up and down and you never know. So you can't be sure. But when it comes to the investment in yourself and your knowledge or the people you surround yourself with, or when you go to seminars or whatever, everything you learn there, all the knowledge you gain can't be taken away from you. So it will be always there. And this is one of these points why people who win in the lottery lose their money again, yeah, because they are so right. afraid of losing it. And they don't have all the strategies, the mindset, and the things they need to know that they can make it back. And when you look at people like yourself, you see you lost everything, but you you got it back. And I'm sure you have this mindset still today that you think when you lose money, you know how to get the money back. And this is the problem. Most people who win the lottery or something similar, they don't know. And so they are in this afraid situation and mindset that they could lose the money and then they don't know what to do. And so I think too, it is so important to invest in yourself and to get this new knowledge and build from there. So it's very true, Victoria. Can I make a comment on that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. You know, a lot of people wonder, why am I suffering the way I am? Why am I going through the pain I'm going through? Why do I have to go through all this defeat and failure and heartache? 
And the answer is to build, well, there's many answers, but one answer is to build the frame on which your future success can hang. If, if you don't go through any of the difficulties and struggles and pain and heartache, and you just all of a sudden are handed a million or $10 million as a lottery winner, you will not have the framework in place, like you said, to be able to handle that success. And so sometimes it's not the weight of failure on the other side that we need to face and be ready for. Sometimes it's the weight of success. And that's just like you said, lottery winners are not prepared for that. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of kids who inherit their parents' fortune are not ready for that. And we've all seen the result of that. So here's the thing. You're going to suffer either way. You're either going to suffer to pay the price for your success or you're not going to do that and you're going to choose to suffer the cost of failure. And I can tell you, Victoria, failure, whether it's in relationships, in money, in health, whatever it is, that's always a higher price than the price of success. Yes, Paul. Wow, that was really great advice and fantastic how you've put it, especially when people are not ready to carry the weight of success. I think that is very true. And that is a, such an interesting thought, a real inspiration to think it through, because I also think you have to grow on the inside to become ready on the outside for it. And one seminar, I heard a very interesting story. And uh, the guy on stage said that when you give a uh, ice cream to uh, to your kid and the kid drops it then of course you would like to buy another ice cream for your child and the child mm -hmm. would point to an even bigger ice cream portion mm -hmm. but it wasn't the kid wasn't able to handle the small version so it wouldn't make any sense to give the kid a bigger ice cream so and i think there was mm. there was a lot of truth in that so mm -hmm. uh, speaking That's in good. pictures here yeah i like it so paul because you are the real estate expert for all the listeners because i think a lot of people would love to invest in real estate but from the mindset they think they need a lot of money to go into this field and invest Is this true or are there better strategies where you can even start investing in real estate with a low budget? I'm going to give you two different answers for that. So first of all, I'll give you three. So first of all, if you want to get involved in commercial real estate, like I said, you need millions and millions of dollars to take on a project yourself. Even if you want to get involved in a smaller project, it's still a big chunk of money or and you need the ability to get debt or credit. Now, syndicating, syndication, which is what my company does, allows people to come in at, say, $50,000 or $100,000 in U.S. and be part of a great commercial project. So that's my first answer. Secondly, there's never been a time in history that I'm aware of where people can invest with in great projects with a smaller amount of money. Crowdfunding which in, um, at least in the U.S., are websites like Fundrise, CrowdStreet, Realty Mogul, uh, Realty Shares, um, et cetera, they have given open doors for people to invest as little as, say, five or $10,000 and get access to a small portion of a very large, high-performing investment. So there's never been a time when people could invest for less than they are now. Now, a third answer would be if you really want to get involved yourself, there are some great ways to invest just some sweat equities, just some time to do Airbnb uh, and corporate housing, even if you don't own any real estate yourself. Now, again, I don't know in, in various countries what, what the rules would be, but One way to do that is through what I call a corporate housing arbitrage. And what I mean by that is you can go out and find a rental unit, rent it out, 
get a great relationship with the owner, whether it's a duplex or an individual house or an apartment in an apartment complex or a condo, you rent it out. You beautifully furnish it. You can even rent the furnishings, by the way. Beautifully (laughs) photograph it so you get great photography. Then put it on Airbnb. Now, as soon as you got it on Airbnb and VRBO and all those other websites that uh, that are out there, you know, uh, then go out and start looking for corporate housing clients. And what I mean by that is people who are on three to six to 12-month stays. Some of them don't want to be in hotels. Some of them don't want to be in the Hilton or Marriott, and they would rather be in a, you know, true, like an apartment or a condo. And so you've got this furnished place, and their companies have given these engineers or pilots or uh, construction people or professors um, uh, or traveling nurses or physical therapists or doctors. They've given them a very high budget to allow them to stay in a nice place. Well, that budget is going to be enough to pay you as the corporate housing arbitrage person. It's going to pay you a very nice income. And so there is a way to make a lot of money through that. In, in the U.S. at least, you know, a typical apartment, 1,000 square feet, 800 square feet might rent for 800 or or uh, $1,000 a month. But these corporate furnished housing units with flexible lease terms and the Internet and electricity, et cetera, paid for – they may rent for $2,000 a month. Well, there's a lot of room for profit there. And that's the way to do it with no money out of your pocket, just some marketing <laughs> and some effort on your part. Ah, really cool, Paul. I think this is also, this is almost a magic idea, I think. Really uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> so the the last, on my last flight uh, back from London, I actually read an article around that and I thought, hmm, it's a really clever concept. There's a, a gentleman who's doing this at the moment and he's really looking for special places, houses around the world and is doing exactly that. So he's also himself living as this, as this normaid. And I think this is also so where this is for, because more and more people tap into the internet online world, like where they can work from anywhere in the world. And I think it's also interesting for them, as well as you said, for corporate people who are working there and just staying for a limited amount of time in a specific city. So. Yeah. Really good advice yeah. to start, I think. And also it's, it's creative, really, I think. So really good inspiration from you today. So let's dive a little bit deeper into inspiration because you mentioned that meditation plays a big role for you. Can you take us through your meditation ritual? Yeah, I think I can to, to an extent. Um, I, um, I'm a real fast-paced, hard-driving entrepreneur, and I book up my calendar pretty heavily. So what I learned over the years, Victoria, is that I really need to have some downtime. And if I try to schedule it late morning or mid-afternoon or even in the evening, it usually doesn't happen. So what I do is the first thing in the morning, um, I try to listen to a podcast or something, uh, you know, some kind of a sermon or whatever Uh, while I exercise. And then after that, I just try to spend about an hour uh, alone just reading and I pray and I even journal. And I find that some of the deepest thoughts and secrets of my heart come out in journaling in ways that I don't think of consciously in any other way. And I think, this is just my theory, I think when your hand is moving with a pen in it or when you're typing, I think somehow it distracts someone like me who has a very busy, fast-paced mind. It somehow distracts me because my mind can only focus on writing. And while it's writing, I think my spirit somehow feeds information into my mind in in ways that never happen uh, other times. And so I get ideas and I get um, brainstorms and I get marketing, you know, ideas, investment ideas, etc. Sometimes when I journal that I wouldn't get in any other way. And I personally believe that You know, it's because we're created in the image of God, and I believe that we all have that likeness in us, and therefore we're able to tap into this divine creativity. 
uh, this divine genius. Uh, you know, our brains, you know, you've probably read about quantum physics, Victoria. I'm sure you have yes, seen it, the magic. Uh, our brains can make, what is it, 40, tri- 40 quadrillion calculations per second? There's got to be a lot of stuff in there in our brains that we're not tapping into. And I think meditation and practices like that can allow us to tap into a lot of that. So anyway. Yes, you're so right. And I really like the idea that you're working with this and that you are approaching all the big projects. And despite you are this very busy entrepreneur, you are taking this time for you to get clear on your next decisions and what you are doing and taking this time in the morning to get in a, in a good mood, in a good performance mood and also doing this meditation. So, Paul, you mentioned before that you are too a podcast hoster, what I really appreciate. And it has the interesting title, How to Lose Money. But we figured already out that it is more about creating wealth and building wealth. But can you give us a little bit more on information around your podcast? Yeah, Um You know, I heard about a guy, I heard a story of a guy who was sitting in an airport and he was sitting down next to another guy and he, they got to talking and he told him his brilliant idea to starting a new product or service. And later the guy sitting next to him sent him a million dollars to invest in his company and they both ended up having great success. They both made millions of dollars. I heard that story. I applauded and then I wondered what to do with it. What do I do with that, Victoria? Do I, do I go sit in airports and just wait for some millionaire to sit next to me to invest in my company? Or how do I replicate that success? And there are many ways to replicate success. I mean, we just talked about meditation five minutes ago. But, you know, there are a lot of things that people do to fail that need to be talked about. A lot of times when we hear these great entrepreneurs and business leaders and uh, authors and wealthy people talk, you know, we hear about all their great successes and we applaud, but we sometimes don't hear about their failures. Sometimes we don't hear about the pain and the struggles. You know, we think, wow, they're an overnight success, but we don't realize they spent years or decades struggling and scratching and clawing and being set back. Uh, Gary Keller, the founder of the largest real estate company in the U.S., perhaps the world, Keller Williams, said, success is defined as failing again and again and again, but not giving up. And so what we decided to do with this podcast, Victoria, was we want to talk to successful investors, entrepreneurs, business and thought leaders, and ask them about their failures. We asked them to explain when they lost money, when they lost time, when they lost relationships and how that impacted them and how that built that frame, that framework that we were talking about earlier that gave them the ability to succeed greatly and be able to carry that success in the future. So that's called How to Lose Money. And we're having a lot of fun. We do about one show a week. And Victoria, hopefully you've never lost money in anything. But if you have, we'd love to have you on as a guest. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Paul, for this kind invitation. And I can't wait to talk again with you. And I'm sure we will have some fun there. And I'm going to tell you how magicians lose money and bring it back. <laughs> so a different approach on that. Okay. So... Let's say to wrap everything up, I have the feeling that we could talk on for hours because you have so much knowledge and it's so interesting, all your life stories and all the experiences you went through yourself. So maybe to give some more advice out on mindset, what would you say, Paul, are the best ways to improve the mindset and to get in another mood when you're not feeling so well, when you are struggling with with some money topics, what is the best way, the best first steps to change your mindset and to really change the inner game? Victoria, I'm going to share something right now that I doubt that I've ever shared publicly. And if you decide to edit it out, I wouldn't blame you because it sounds pretty wacky. 
but <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm uh, curious I, now. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I believe, you know, we were created. I think that our minds work better when we're not fearing, when we're not under a heavy weight of sadness or oppression or confusion or doubt. I mean, you know, I mean, you can walk around a room a lot better when there's a light on, correct? So I think uh, to light up our brain, uh, to light up our way, to clear out the confusion and pain and all those voices of doubt, here it comes. I try, I do this thing. I've been trying it for about three years now. And what I do is I laugh and I fake laugh. Now that sounds horrible. I know, but I actually, what I do is when I don't feel like there's anything funny, I don't feel like there's anything that all feels heavy and I'm all, you know, concerned or sometimes when I'm not, I just want to be in a good mood for, uh, to meet somebody or to, uh, to go on a podcast, I'll fake laugh. And what I mean by that is I'll just roar, uh, do a kind of a gut level laugh and I'll laugh uh, intentionally for maybe 30 seconds. And what I'll find is I actually think of funny things then, and then I really start laughing. And it seems like a ridiculous idea. I heard a speaker talk about this, and he actually caused his, uh, made his audience do it for several minutes. And so I did it in the uh, all alone in my basement. I actually did it, and I was kind of nervous. Oh, no, who's going to hear me? Well, maybe I can you know, act like I was laughing at something funny on YouTube. But you know what? I found it worked. And so as far as clearing your mind, getting uh, joy, getting uh, in a position where I can think clearly, act clearly, I, I do a lot of, uh, I do some fake laughter. And uh, there's so many other things I can do. I think another important thing we were, we've been given as creative beings is the power of words. And one of your other, maybe several of your other guests have talked about this, but we need to be declaring what we want to have happen. Um, there's a, a saying that talks about someone who declared things as that were not as though they were. And so that's what I do. Uh, I don't, you know, know that I have no health problems, but I declare every night before I go to bed that my, I live in perfect health. I, out, I do that out loud. Irritates my wife a little. I, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I say that I'm going to live to 100 years old in 100% perfect mental, emotional, and physical health. Uh, and I make a whole lot of other declarations in the evening and in the morning. And those verbal out loud declarations help set a mindset for success. And just saying those words, and this is well documented, um, that saying those words out loud and saying it from my heart can actually bring about those results. You know, there was a magazine in the United States, at least, in, called Reader's Digest that was popular when I was a kid. And there was an article in there uh, in the 80s or 90s that said that they studied a whole large cross-section of people that they said had essentially equal health. I think it was 43, 4,000 people or something. And they asked them to rate their health, excellent, good, fair, or poor. And like I said, these people generally had about the same health. And they were 60 years old and older. And they studied these people, and then they went back and checked them out five or ten. No, I think it was like three years later. And the number of people who rated their health poor died at about four or I think it was four times the rate of those who rated their health excellent. Yet they all had about the same health going into the study. So what we believe and what we say is really really important. And Victoria, my hat's off to you because you're bringing that out. You're telling the world this on your podcast. Thank you for doing that. Thanks, Paul. Abracadabra, I create as I speak. This is the famous saying, and I think it's so true. Thank you so much for being on the show, for being on Pure Mind Magic today. That was really a great interview with so much inspiration in so many different fields. And I can't wait to be on your show. Just for the end, give us a website where the listeners can find you, can connect with you. And also, is there a way that you 
help people like consult them on real estate investment or investment in general? Give us whatever you like. Absolutely. Okay. So my website is wellingscapital.com. That's W-E-L-L-I-N-G-S, capital C-A-P-I-T-A-L.com. And you can fill out our contact form on there and tell us what you're looking for. If you're looking to talk about investing or if you'd like some consultation, be glad to jump on a phone call or a Skype with you. And we can talk about your situation. We can talk about what's important to you. And if I can help in any way, I'll do it. And uh, as you know, we also have a podcast on iTunes and Google and Stitcher. It's called How to Lose Money. We're at howtolosemoney.com. Fantastic. I think then we got it all. Thanks again, Paul, for being on the show. Let's stay in contact and maybe even bring you back on another episode. Great, Victoria. It's been a real honor to be here. And thanks again. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me today at Pure Mind Magic and the show with Paul Moore. I hope you got some really great ideas about where to invest money in 2019. Remember to check out if you still need a creative a present made for you, the online platform I've put in the show notes, People Per Hour, where you can hire any freelancer in any area to get done whatever you have in mind. So coming to tomorrow, there is another one of my favorite interviews this year. It is with Ali Boone. And we are also talking a little bit about real estate uh, investment, but most of all about passive income. She's really like a lifestyle entrepreneur and really good at that, creating businesses that run automatically while you are traveling the world or doing whatever. And it's really a strong energy and uh, we directly connected. So I'm sure you will enjoy this interview tomorrow. Until then, create some magic. Music.